these are difficult days to be a Roman Catholic. The allegations regarding Archbishop Theodore McCarrick and now the release of the grand jury report involving six dioceses in Pennsylvania have deepened a wound for Catholics who have been besieged by news of clergy sexual abuse since 2002. It is understandable for many to ask, what is next? What and who can I trust? How did this ever happen? The people of God are rightfully asking these questions. In these recent days, we have become painfully aware that those meant to shepherd and guide others are sinners, not only in the sense that all are fallible, but also specifically in the area of sexual abuse of children and young people. They must be held accountable for actions, and bishops are no exception. This past week, our Holy Father, Pope Francis, released a letter to the people of God on the issue of clergy sexual abuse. He pointed out how church leaders failed to respond appropriately in listening to and responding to victims, pointing out that when one member suffers, we all suffer. The Holy Father's letter shows his compassion and concern for victims. The Pope states clearly, with shame and repentance, we acknowledge as an ecclesial community that we were not where we should have been, that we did not act in a timely manner, realizing the magnitude and the gravity of the damage done to so many lives. We showed no care for the little ones. We abandoned them. I am filled with profound sorrow for the victims, disgust for the actions of the perpetrators, anger at those in authority who have been complicit in keeping these serious sins from coming to light, concern for the many fine priests who are steadfast in their commitment to the promises of their ordination, and minister faithfully to the flock entrusted to their care, and solicitude for the people of our diocese who are disturbed, discouraged, and scandalized by the actions of priests and bishops. While it is imperative that we embrace the truth of what happened in the past, we must learn from our failures and move forward. First, our effort should be directed to prayer and fasting. As Pope Francis has stated, the penitential dimension of fasting and prayer will help us as God's people to come before the Lord and our wounded brothers and sisters as sinners, imploring forgiveness and the grace of shame and conversion. Second, we need to stand fast in our commitment to assist victims of sexual abuse. Their lives have been profoundly altered at the hands of those who should have provided them with spiritual guidance. Their courage to come forward and publicly tell their story gives witness to the changes that need to take place. Third, we will continue to follow assiduously our diocesan safe environment policies. Fourth, we will persist in our cooperation with law enforcement in addressing sexual abuse matters. Lastly, I again wish to be clear that despite what has been reported in the media, I have never believed a child was responsible for his or her abuse. The priest or the adult who abused is always responsible. I apologize again in my own name and on behalf of the church for the harm caused to so many individual young people and vulnerable adults by those who are called to be their shepherds and protectors. St. Paul reminded the Ephesians that they were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. For light produces every kind of goodness and righteousness and truth. Surely these are dark and troubling days for our church. We have much work to do to rebuild trust in a church where leaders have failed. I commit myself and this diocese to assist in healing for victims and, in fact, for the wider community. 
And I pray that God will fill your heart and your home with peace and give you the peace that only he can give. God bless you.